morning, everybody. Well, it's Pentecost Sunday, so we're going to look at what it means for us today as believers. Just to set the scene, Jesus is raised from the dead, and over a period of 40 days, he's been appearing in his resurrection body to his disciples. And in John 20, 22, we see him breathe on his disciples and he breathes his spirit onto them and they are born again. And he's carried up into heaven. But he tells them to wait in Jerusalem until they're endued with power. In other words, don't go anywhere, don't do anything till I've equipped you. And he says... John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now we heard earlier that in Acts 2 that the disciples were gathered together on the day of Pentecost. And this was the day that the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and, began to t- and all of them began to speak with other tongues, languages they hadn't learned. Now, up to this point, the Christians, uh, the disciples had been quite weak and quite frightened Christians When Jesus was arrested in the garden, they fled from him in fear. And Peter denied him three times. Despite being in the presence of Jesus for three and a half years, the followers hadn't really changed. But as soon as they received the Holy Spirit, Peter started proclaiming the gospel of Jesus with great boldness and addressed a city of thousands. And this same Peter, who only days before couldn't confess his allegiance to Jesus just to one simple servant girl, now he was on fire and he was rebuking the city for crucifying Jesus and urging them to repent in a very powerful message so that 3,000 were saved and water baptised that day. All the disciples from then on became faithful witnesses and they were prepared to die for their faith. Quite a transformation. They went on repeatedly to see the power of God, to see the intervention of God as they boldly preached the gospel. They healed the sick, they raised the dead, they set people free. And this day of Pentecost marked the beginning of the church and a new era foretold by the prophet Joel, as we've heard earlier. Joel prophesied hundreds of years before and declared it shall come to pass in the last days that I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. And um, Joel said that this outpouring would be in the last days, which is now and that it would be poured out on all flesh. So it has to be for all believers, not just a select few. Peter saw every one of the disciples filled that day with the Holy Spirit, and that's why he declared Joel's prophecy in Acts 2 and explained to the crowd, For the promise of the Holy Spirit is to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord will call. Well, we are the ones afar off, and we are the ones God has called today. In Mark 16, Jesus said that all who believe would speak in in new tongues. This is a sign that people have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, the early church took it for granted that everybody would be filled with the Spirit and speak in tongues. They recognized their absolute dependence on God's power. And many thousands were saved 
because of the signs and wonders following the preaching of the word. So that even those who were waiting on tables had to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit can only happen once we're saved. And it's a separate experience to receiving salvation. When we're born again, God removes our old nature, our sinful spirit, and he gives us a new spirit, holy and blameless, which makes us righteous before him and accepted into God's family as his children. But until we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we're rather like a lamp that's plugged into a socket, but it's not yet switched on. Until the power is flowing through, the light cannot shine and is of little use. We can be saved, but never get switched on to the power. We'll still get to heaven, but our ministry will be limited. Jesus described the baptism in the Holy Spirit as like living water flowing out in power to others like a river. The point of the baptism is not just for ourselves, but to bring the power and life of God to others. And once baptized in the Spirit, there are nine other gifts that we can receive at various times, which the Holy Spirit gives us as and when they're needed. And this is at the Holy Spirit's discretion. The Bible tells us to earnestly desire these gifts, but the Holy Spirit won't force anything on us, so he looks for willing participants. And these gifts, if you want to look at them further, are in 1 Corinthians 12. And they enable us to have supernatural wisdom and knowledge about situations we could not otherwise have, It enables us to minister to people with healings and miracles and also encourage people with words of prophecy and direction. When the disciples began to speak in other tongues on the day of Pentecost, they were all speaking in languages they had never learned. And this heavenly language of the Holy Spirit is for everyone who has been baptised in the Spirit. Now, it's not to be confused with one of the gifts I've just mentioned, the nine gifts described in 1 Corinthians 12, which is only given, that's the gift of tongues, and this is only given to certain individuals at select times when God wants to encourage someone in a group or an individual in a public setting. And it's spoken out before everyone in a church meeting, but it needs an interpretation for others to benefit. So that's the gift of tongues. But contrary to this, speaking in in tongues is something everybody can have and use at any time if you've been filled with the Spirit. It's for our own personal use. As I say, we can use it any time, any place, but it is for our own personal communication with God. We can use it in prayer and worship. We can even sing in tongues. But we don't declare it out loud for everyone to hear specifically and for someone to have to then interpret the whole group. But even so, our personal speaking in tongues has a huge benefit for us all. When you pray in tongues, you're praying the perfect prayer to God. You're praying his will. It's not your prayer, it's his prayer. Your mind's not engaged, only your spirit. So you can't mess up, miss the mark, you can't ask for the wrong things, you can't pray the wrong theology. And that's especially useful when you don't know how to pray in a particular situation or for a particular person. Example, say someone dies, how do you pray for someone grieving? Well, you might think that's fairly obvious. There are certain things you would want to pray but God knows exactly what they need. It might be they are dealing with fear, fear of having to pay the bills, fear of a lower a reduction in income because their partner's died. And, but we're actually praying something different. So 
you know, it might not be wrong what we're praying, but it might not be hitting the target. It could be that we're praying in tongues and asking someone to come alongside that person to help them with their bills, to help them understand how to do it all or whatever. It might be that God's revealing to you that you're the person. When you pray in tongues, you can get revelation. You can get guidance from the Holy Spirit and how to respond in a situation or when you have a decision to make. And we can say... Lord, I'm going to speak in tongues now and I'm trusting that you're going to show me what to do, how to respond. Then we speak in tongues and ask for revelation. And suddenly you'll find a certain direction, a certain thought, a certain idea will come to mind that takes you forward. Have you ever tried speaking in tongues and then writing down what he says to you, you'll be amazed. I keep a journal, and I'll just spend a few minutes in tongues, five, ten minutes, and then I'll listen, and I'll, well, I'll just write down what I feel God's saying, and it's just incredible. I've just got a whole collection of love letters from God through that. Try it. it you just won't be disappointed. You'll be amazed. Just download what comes to mind after you've spoken in tongues. And you can do it for as long as you wish. Two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. You can stop and start. It's not a problem to the Holy Spirit to speak for hours. After all, he's communicating with his Father all the time. It's also helpful when you're praying with someone that's with you and you want to give them a specific word from God. Or you just want direction to know how to pray in English. But if you speak in tongues first, God will give you the words to say. You might get a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, some encouragement for them. And this helps you to grow in the gifts. Because you can discover how accurate you've been by just asking, you know, how was that, you know, did that hit the mark kind of thing. And you'll, you'll often get a response anyway. We just have to trust God that he'll give us the right words and, or the right gift that we need. And when praying in tongues on our own, in our own personal prayer time, or we're out about, say, in, in the garden or the car or something, in, in a home, in a private situation, we can be praying for situations that we know nothing about and people we've never met. Sometimes the Holy Spirit actually prompts us to speak in tongues. We have suddenly this desire to pray, but we don't know why or what. We could be praying for someone across the world or for a family member of ours in trouble or a friend. It's exciting. Imagine getting to heaven and someone running up to you and thanking you for saving their life and you've never met them before. But your praying in tongues had sent an angel to their rescue or brought a Christian into their life that gave them the gospel. I heard a true story of a man who had been in a church meeting and he came out of church feeling compelled to speak in tongues. Later, he discovered that at that exact time, another family driving away from his church had faced Um, a head-on collision from a car heading straight for them. It drove at them on the wrong side of the road, but it went supernaturally through them, and they found it on the other side behind them. And they were completely unharmed, though rather shocked. And it was only when they were chatting later, as it happened with this man, that they discovered the connection. Because you're praying the perfect will of God, you can also pray into being your own destiny, God's destiny, for your own life. You can be praying into being the plans that God has for you. When you speak in tongues, you're also reminding yourself that you're not just a human being. You have the life and power of the Holy Spirit in you, 
and it focuses your attention on the spiritual, which means you're going to walk in the spirit more than in the flesh, and people will see the fruit of that. And that in itself is a good witness. And finally, and not least, 1 Corinthians 14 and Jude verse 20 both say it's a way of building yourself up in your body and your soul. Now, it's not for your spirit because your spirit's already built up. It's, it's complete. It lacks nothing. So speaking in tongues lifts you up, strengthens and energizes you. It fights off depression and anxiety. Dr. Carl Peterson a Christian medical doctor and brain scientist did some research and he discovered there's a part of your brain that's only used when people speak in tongues. Isn't that amazing? Just think, God designed a little bit of our brain specifically for praying in tongues in everyone's brain right from the beginning of time, right from Adam and Eve, in preparation for speaking in tongues in the church age. Other studies during, uh, using the MRI scan showed that the language areas and the willful part of the brain where we, where we purpose what to do according to our will, these were relatively quiet when speaking in tongues. And this was compared to a group of nuns just praying with their own mind and their own language. And in this case, the areas of language and will in the brain were still very much in use. And the studies also showed a release of endorphins when speaking in tongues, chemicals such as serotonin and dopamine that bring an uplift in mood. They act as painkillers, and they increase the immune system by 35 to 40%, which is clearly good for our health. Isn't God good? A study of 1,000 men who spoke in tongues showed a reduction in their reaction to normal things that would stress them. They coped better, they kept calmer. So, praying in tongues, though done privately, impacts those around us because it makes us happier, more positive, more fruitful. It also enables God to act on our behalf, both for ourselves and others, in ways we could never have thought to pray. So all these reasons, for all these reasons, spirit in t speaking in tongues is something to be very much sought after, along with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And God must have wanted us all to use it because he put it in our brains. He prepared our brains for it. After the disciples were, re were baptized, they repeatedly saw the miraculous power of God as they boldly preached the gospel. They healed the sick, they raised the dead, they set people free. And God desires us to receive the baptism because such signs and wonders demonstrate the reality, the power and the love of God. We ought to pray in tongues daily and frequently because we can't function fully for God without it. Paul said he prayed in tongues more than anyone else. And, it's, and we find that the great men and women of God, you often see that they were very into praying in tongues. We can always ask for a refilling uh, and start reusing our gifts at any time. We can practice when in a home or in the car. The more we use it, the more it develops. It's like a child learning its langu language for the first time. You might be thinking, well, I asked for the Holy Spirit, but since I don't speak in tongues, I can't have been filled. Well, speaking in tongues is a sign, but it's only a sign. And if you've asked for the baptism, then you have already received. Luke 11, verses 11 to 13 says, and it's uh, Jesus speaking, he said, If your earthly fathers, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit 
to those who ask him. It's a good gift, and God promises to all who, it, to all who are baptized, uh, born again. Paul encourages all to eagerly desire the gifts. Speaking in tongues is just the beginning. For some, listening here now, baptism might seem strange, even something to avoid. But God only gives us good gifts. And in the early church, it was part of the normal Christian life. God's wanting us all to worship him in spirit and in truth. Speaking in tongues is the perfect way to communicate with him. It doesn't mean we don't speak in English, our own language too, of course. You may be thinking, well, I haven't been baptized, been baptized in water yet. But water baptism, though highly recommended because it's a statement, it's a declaration of your faith, it doesn't make you a Christian. It's just a confirmation that what, of what you've already done and what's already happened in your life. So it doesn't have to happen first before you get filled with the Spirit. You simply need to be born again to receive the baptism in the Spirit. It is best to be filled with the Holy Spirit as soon as possible, when you're born again even, but you can re receive this any time. Speaking in tongues is a clear sign that you've received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but it's only a sign. <clears throat> when I received the baptism, I didn't speak in tongues for about another week, and that was because I was rather wary of it. But during that week, I had a strong prompting by the Holy Spirit to start speaking in tongues, but um, I felt just very self-conscious and, and resisted it. And you might be feeling that way, but please... Don't let that stop you receiving the baptism. It's a good gift from God. You might be wary of speaking tongues because you think it's going to take you over. You're not in control. The Holy Spirit will never force himself on you. He waits for your cooperation. You just have to yield to him and choose to open your mouth and use your tongue to speak. Then in faith, let the Holy Spirit speak. And you can stop and start speaking tongues at any time. You're in complete control of when you do and don't use the gift. And it's quite common to think, actually, at first, you're making it up. But your brain isn't engaged. The words are coming from the Holy Spirit. I began to realize um, this heavenly language was real. I tried um, speak, uh, when I was speaking in tongues... I thought, right, I'm going to say my two times table in my head at the same time. And I managed to do it. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. So my brain was engaged. My, my brain wasn't engaged, just my spirit. People's experiences of receiving the baptism can be very different. But one thing is certain. Your loving Heavenly Father wants you to receive it for yourself if you haven't already. And he wants you to increase your use of the gifts if you have. So, do you want to see the sick healed, the dead raised, people set free? Then you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to have words of knowledge and God-given encouragement for the weary, the broken, the, dis the discouraged do you want to draw people into the kingdom? Then you need the gifts and the boldness that comes with baptism in the Spirit. Do you want to pray perfect prayers and see the will of God come to pass in your life and others? Then you need to speak in tongues. To be baptized in the Spirit is the second most important decision you'll make after being born again. So, firstly, I'm going to give opportunity for people here to give their life to Jesus if they haven't already. There's no better time to do it than today. Don't go another day without knowing the love, the joy, 
the peace and the protection of God. Make your peace with God. No one knows the hour or day when the, our time on earth is over. Make your decision to surrender your life to God before it's too late. And unless we're born again with his spirit in this life, we cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the only way to God. He's the truth and he's our life. And he said, no one comes to the Father except through me. So I'm going to say a prayer, which, if you repeat after me, will save you and bring you into God's kingdom. God will become your loving, heavenly Father, and you'll have nothing to fear ever again. You'll be safe in his arms. You'll be assured of a wonderful future with God forevermore. You'll be in his kingdom, free of pain, anxiety, and suffering when once you go into his kingdom in heaven. Church, could you please help me by joining in so that we can pray this together and so no one feels singled out? Because I'm going to say this prayer and I'd like you to all to repeat it after me so that those who do want to receive Jesus um, can... Um, Receive it, speak it out. Okay, so we're going to pray. So if you want to receive Jesus into your life for the first time, pray alongside the rest of the church. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. I'm sorry for my sin because it hurt you. My sin hurt me and it hurt others. Thank you for taking my punishment on the cross. You paid the price for my sin. Thank you I'm forgiven every sin, past, present and future. Thank you for dying for me. I believe you rose from the dead. From this day forward, I want you to live in my life. I want to follow you. Come into my heart and make me a new creation. Be my Lord, my Savior, and best friend. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to live in me. Now I begin a new life in you. Amen. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And if you pray that prayer for the first time and mean it, then this is a day of celebration for you are a completely new person in your spirit. You are now in God's family, accepted by God and forgiven of all your past, present and future sin. This is the beginning of a brand new life. Tell someone that you've received Jesus into your life, hopefully before you leave here, so we can help you grow as a believer. Get a Bible, read it daily and keep coming to church. Now, as we've been praying together for salvation, anyone who's already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you if you can help me by now joining in with a prayer that, to help others receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So if you wish to be filled with the Holy Spirit for the first time, or you're asking for a refilling, Please join in with us now by repeating after me. And this is for everyone who is born again, even those who have already, who have just perhaps given their lives to the Lord. <clears throat> Believe that when you ask, God will fill you with the Holy Spirit right now. And then trust God for the gift of speaking in tongues. And then church, after the prayer, 
If you could speak in tongues to encourage those who have just been baptised in the Spirit to, to start their tongue. And we'll have a few minutes of speaking together in tongues. So we're going to have the prayer. You're going to repeat it after me. Then we're all going to speak in tongues. And then as you're speaking in tongues, trust God to give you a word for somebody else in the congregation. Trust that God's going to give each one of you a word of knowledge, a word of encouragement, just a little, maybe a little scripture, a verse, even just one word. And ask, who is this, who is this for, Lord? It's somebody, somebody here, Lord, who is that? Or just say, I want to pray for this person. Now, Lord, what would you like to say to them? So you're speaking in tongues and you're getting revelation as we're all speaking in tongues together. And then after we finish the meeting, you can go to that person and share it with them. Okay, so we're going to pray together. You're going to repeat after me. As I say, if you've not received the Holy Spirit yet, do it with the rest of us and just trust God. So let's pray. Father God, I desire to be filled right now with the Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh. Fill me anew. I thank you that I am receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit right now. Amen. Okay, folks, let's speak in tongues now. And just in, those of you who've been baptized, just go, come along with us. Just try speaking. Yield to the Holy Spirit and let the, let the Holy Spirit speak through you. Yasa kuramanda da si kuramanda sa kuramanda da kura si kuramanda si kumama mama da sta kura si ramana na manda da si kuramanda si kura shdia kura sakaba da si kuramanda si kuramanda. Church, ask for those words of knowledge and revelation, words of encouragement. Kura si kuramanda sta kuramanda. Thank you, Father. Sending your Holy Spirit.
There is no God like Jehovah. There is no 